show. Lee Mac, Hyacinth, and Mark in the middle. Every week on Ira Busto. Come on, meet in the middle. Stogie's news and views on our show. Lee Mac, Hyacinth, and Mark in the middle. Every week on Ira Busto. Come on. Go. Hello everyone, welcome to the show. We are in April and we are now into our April cigars um, on the Meat and Middle show. This one is by Black Star Line and it's very hot. Be careful guys, it's called Mr. Fahrenheit. It's uh, what they described as a Corona Gorda, even though I think it's a 6x46. So yeah, it should be Corona Lacha, no, a little bit longer. Not, not fatter. But anyway, let's go to the Emac 912 and uh, see how things are hanging on that side of the pond. Uh, let me check. That hanging kind of low tonight. Good <laughs> afternoon, <laughs> my cigar smoking family. How the heck is everybody doing? Hope everybody is doing good. My brother Spider is over there. I see you, Spider. I see you when you got on. You got on a lot of hunting clothes, man. You got on, <laughs> you got on a lot of hunting clothes because it's cold out there where he is and his damn heater has crunked down and it ain't doing too good. But I see you, Spider. Glad to have you in the house tonight. Great man. What's going on? Sid Butler, way in the back, way in the back. And Dude Rod, Dude Rod is riding right now. He's doing the Vernon Palmer he, or Anthony Smiley. He's riding. He said, I'll catch up with y'all in 30 minutes. I told him, I said, we still be here. We still be here. Latanya, what's going on? Wipe your mouth, Latanya. I know you eating, but wipe your mouth. I see you over <laughs> here. Uh, yeah, what else? Who else I need to see? I think that's all I see in the house tonight. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another Sunday evening. Me in the middle show. And like uh, Hyacinth said, we are going to be smoking the... See, I told you she was eating. <laughs> she had crumbs on her mouth. I saw the crumbs on her mouth. Um, 
We are chilling tonight. We are going to be smoking the Mr. Fahrenheit for my boy, Eric Bay and his partner. I can only remember Eric's name. I forget yeah. his partner's name. Uh, you know his partner's name, Hyacinth? No. We'll I'm get back to it, but we're going yeah. we to no. get to you. No, we, but we're going to be smoking the Mr. Hyacinth, which has got a shaggy foot on it. Kind of interesting. And, you know, tonight, since we have good light, I could turn this around and go, yeah. Your density. <laughs> There's your density, family. <laughs> hey, Mark, I was, um, I, I saw uh, Spider said he was staying hype. I didn't post this picture yet, uh, but, oh. you know, I tried to spread out my, uh, my, uh, my posts or whatever. But, you know, I was uh, Friday night. Let's see. Yeah, we were, you That's know. That's right. And we were hype, baby. Yeah, <laughs> but, but a night hype, baby. That's what's up. Yeah, man. Yeah, so we'll, so... we'll get that out time, sometime this week and mm -hmm. post it. You know, people say, you hype every about. day. I'm like, I ain't hyped today, but that was on Friday. But anyway, we're going to be smoking <laughs> a cigar. Glad to have y'all join us. Very nice cigar. Mark, can you guess what's in this cigar before you light it up? <laughs> <laughs> I probably could. I think, I mean, it, like when I did the cold draw on this cigar, right? I, I did a little, little cold draw. I got some raisin and stuff. And... It's probably Nicaraguan. Maybe look like look at here. How about this? I'll just go. I'll I'll stick with it. Let's see if we can prove it otherwise. I'm gonna go <laughs> Nicaraguan with a Mexican San Andreas wrapper, and then we'll see if we can if if I if I'm just if by smoking it I disprove it. How does that sound? So, what do you think, yeah, Isaac? You start. Yeah. That sounds good to me, but I got a problem over here. I got a big problem, Mark. You don't have the cigar. You smoked it already. No, oh, no, I got the damn cigar. <laughs> The problem is, I can't find a straight cutter that I want to use. That's the problem. All right, there you go. That is a problem. That's a big, big problem. Eesh. I might have to do a punch cut, uh, Hyacinth. Might have to use a punch. Ah! He said he might have to use a punch up. I'm doing punch I'd have to do a punch cut, but that's a negative. Done. Gotta have a backup. Got, ah, got, there we go. Gotta have a backup. Be cut I mafia my been on my cut. ass, so you know every time. See what happened was so. So here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna tell you what happened, right? Uh, Latanya stole my damn V cutter, <laughs> bought another one. Then she snuck in here and stole another one. I mean, she stole my straight cutter, and she she left behind when she stole the straight cutter. Then all of a sudden, I noticed front and center. All of a sudden, front and center. Here's a V cutter. How does V cutter <laughs> get on my desk? Just front and center. All of a sudden, here's the V cutter, but my straight cut is gone. So I replaced it, and then all of a sudden, I still ain't got no damn straight cutter. But I found the. She's backup. so naughty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we all chilling. We everybody's here. Good, good, good to see you all. And um, so Lee Mac gave all the shout outs. I I see. You stay hype. I see. <laughs> Yeah, listen, my Mark, ask them in the in the uh, chat what they think about the cold draw on the cigar. I heard you say raisins and stuff like that. I want to hear what the chat is thinking about yeah. the, uh, the cold draw. You heard the question, chat. No evidence, chat. no crime. You're right. <laughs> she yes, said sir. she ain't seen me, but I know she's seen my damn lighter, so she ain't had to see me, but my damn, <laughs> need my cutter. <laughs> there you go. So what would you get on the cold draw, folks? That's what, that's what the question is right now. Um... So hi, Sam, did you, uh, Sorry. did you start it off? Yeah, I already did my, my pre-light long time ago. You guys ready? Is, is the audience ready to light? Is everyone let, ready to light? I, I, do you want to give my, my information or not? Well, we could all write, we could all light, you know, we could do stuff, right? You, yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I mean, already ate, so I'm eating my after dinner pretzels, you know, so we can all do all those things. I did get, um, to, uh, tobacco gray man says on the cold draw i got tobacco mark did you say raisin on the cold draw i did yeah, i get that i get that raisin and tobacco kind of taste on the cold draw so being that it tastes like raisin on the cold draw what type of tobacco does that remind you of um a lot of times it's uh it's the nicaraguan it's nicaraguan um like a some variation on the filler Mm -hmm. of of Nicaraguan, you know, maybe an SLE. Um, a lot of times I do get, uh, yeah, like it could be Ecuadorian too sometimes, but mm -hmm. a lot of times it's it's that it's that Nicaraguan SLE tobacco that's kind of there. That's like that. So 
We got Jets mess mess in the house. Hello, all. Jets um, mess mess mess. He got three messes. Yeah. Wow, you? he's all in the mess there with the Jets. So I, don't, I don't know why that's. I don't know why that's his name. Jets mess mess mess. You got to tell us what the heck is going on with that. Well, because the Jets are a mess. No, I'm just teasing. I don't know if they're a mess this year. Oh, well, last year, whenever they were playing. Um, I love this cigar soap. The way it looks, it's very rustic with a rolling, rolling ice. Rustic, lumpy, bumpy kind of looking wrapper going on there. And for me, I didn't get any of the raisin, but I did get some and a bit of slight sweetness on my aroma test. Still getting it. And then on the uh, cold draw, I got what I described, a minty cocoa flavor. Um, so yeah, I'm digging this, this shag foot, which is a nice tight shag foot, right? Lee Mac, the worst thing you can get is those loose shag foots and you end up with ash all in your, you know what I mean? Because it just like flakes mm -hmm. off and goes everywhere, right? This yep. one, the ash is nice and tight. The shag foot is nice and tight on the end there. So you don't now, have problems you, with that. I, I hope not anyway. Are you getting any, uh, shout out to Cod Boo. He's in the house. He says uh, he's getting a little bit Cod of pepper on the tongue. Are you getting some pepper on your tongue along with that tobacco sweetness? No. No. Okay, me either. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to light up Nine. my damn cigar. Everybody else, I'm sure y'all have already lit your cigar up. We're going to light it up. We're going to get the uh, shaggy foot shagging. And, uh, you know, we're going to see what is going on. Hey, Mark, you remember them old vans, the shagging wagons? Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got that mo <laughs> mohair. <laughs> mohair. The mo that's, that's the thing, you know, it's so weird. The word... Well, the word shag has a completely different meaning in the UK. That's all I've got to say. So you understand the shagging wagon. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So if that's what you do in a shagging wagon, get your leg yes. over, then yes, that, then, 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 then that is the English, complete English uh, uh, interpretation. So. There you go. Cam Scott. Shag baby. What's going on, Cam Scott? Cam Scott, cool. He laid back. He cool as a damn fan. Gat in hand. Uh, you know, I could, I, I could see Cam Scott in like a 1971, a 71 deuce in the quarter. That little brownish gold color that one they have there. I see Cam. He leaning to the side. He like this. He got one hand up on the wheel. He going down 95, and he looking at you. He go by you. He just. Get one of them. <laughs> What's up, Cam Scott? Good to see you, baby. He's chilling. Great man hey. said he's getting a, niche, a little pepper on the initial puffs. Now, it yeah, I was am. Todd Boo who said he had pepper oh, on please, the yeah. tongue on the cold draw. I'm not, I'm just getting tobacco. So, I mean, you're getting pepper there, Hyacinth? I am. I've got a little bit of peppers. I is getting a bit of dirty earth, I like to call it. A dirty earth? Dirty earth. Ooh, cool. Ah. And uh, the slight pepper so far. A little bit of sweetness. Um, I don't know. The sweetness is hard to describe because it's not sugary sweet. But I'm not really getting that figginess either. So <laughs> hard to define right now. Maybe more oh. of a caramel. I don't know if anybody saw that. But when I was doing, when I was, I was like holding my cigar in my hand. And I went to twist it and look at it. Uh, look at the 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 band and it turned into my hand and i actually burned my my the palm of my hand oh, like it, no. somehow it turned into my that's i've never done that before that's yeah that's well, crazy. don't don't burn your hand um that's number one rule uh, i was gonna say that i wasn't getting much pepper but then i did a retro hail and the retro hail like jacked up the pepper spice uh on me uh and I wrote down spicy pepper, like that's what I was starting to get. Now, I guess it's still kind of hanging around there a little bit, the spicy pepper. Rob Cunningham, Cleveland, Ohio, what's going on, baby? We got Eclipse viewing tomorrow at 3.13. Are you going to be able to see that? I don't think we're going to be able to see that where I'm at, but I don't know. But what you're going to be smoking during the Eclipse? And Rob, here's the most important question. Are you like renting out spaces in your front yard so people can sit in their lawn chair and watch? <laughs> Why can't you? Of course, you should be able to see it, Lee Mac. You're in you're in New you're in America. I don't. Yeah, I mean, in, in England they can see it. All right, here. No, no, no. The the the. They are. That's, that's 
Okay. There's a path, so though. Okay. Yeah. What I'm saying is, is I. Okay. Go ahead. I was just gonna say that yeah, with the eclipse, uh, everybody in America should be able to see it, but only, only a certain like path of people will see the full eclipse. Correct. Um, and that and that same applies to like in England and the fact that even in Spain there'll be some thing of it, but you know it won't. It'll be so minor you won't even really be well, able to see it. It's unnoticeable yeah, it's here. Yep. Like in in Europe, it's unnoticeable, but yep. but so like flee back. You like um, as far as I know. I was looking at the the eclipse uh, path. It does go pretty close to Maryland. Yeah. So you well, should be not you on should the be damn good. map I was looking at. But what do I know, man? 313, Rob, 313 will be, have to be out here smoking a cigar at 313 whether the damn thing is going past our way or not. We will see. Yeah. 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 I'm uh Yeah, I'm 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 getting a little bit of that that earth and uh, and some some interesting flavors off of it. The Shackfoot is is pretty cool. When I was looking at, I wanted to look at Hyacinth cigar, and I looked at mine as well. And I I thought it was like a half Shackfoot. But what I like to do when a cigar has a Shackfoot when it doesn't have the wrapper on it, I like to uh, fray out the fray out the tobacco on the on the foot a little bit so that it gets some air. And I know, like again, if if anybody was noticing when I was lighting the cigar. Um, I don't, I, I try to not touch the flame to them and I like to like be, it's like, see how far away I can go with the lighter from the, from the end so that you don't get any char on there. But with the shag foot, it makes it a little easier to do that because you get more air in there and you can stoke it up. Yeah, I just like to, like to put my, <laughs> I'm just teasing, put it on the jets. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't do that guys. Don't, <laughs> don't ash up your jets. Mm -hmm. That just uh, leads to a clogged lighter and uh, problems going forward. So, yeah, don't recommend that. <laughs> um, yeah, but that, that, but yeah, that's so so far. Um, yeah, it's just kind of undetermined what what uh, what I'm tasting. I, it's weird. I, I, I find myself like in the show a couple like almost every week for the last couple of weeks. I've been unable to really describe what I'm what I'm tasting. I haven't had the the uh, um what do they call it the uh, the the descriptors down so wow the smoke is like i don't know if it's me well the smoke is just getting in my nose sorry getting down my throat and in my nose which isn't good in the bad well way. i am right now just just about getting rid of the uh, shaggy foot part of it. Uh, mm. It is smoking very well. I am really kind of quite digging this cigar. First of all, it's in my size. It's a 6x46. They call it a Corona Gorda. I like that size. It is um, kind of like to pep to, to peppery. Tobacco, slightly <laughs> peppery. Right. I'm not, getting a li I'm not getting a whole lot of anything else, but it's uh, the finish is kind of sticking around there and the strength is kind of warming up the back of my head i feel like i'm sweating a little bit on the back of my head so you know mm -hmm. <laughs> so this one hi said you said this was uh the the corona gorda yes that's what it was called i are you sure about that yep it has one size is so it's a it's a corona gorda i know it's not a corona gorda i know that but that's what I saw on the website, and that's what I've seen on the web. That, from most that, websites, there's only one side in this cigar. So. That's what you're. That's what you're going with. That's what they describe it as. I don't think it's a Corona Gorda either. I think it's a Corona Lafa. No, I'm with you. I was when when you had said that it was it was there because like normally, so Gorda means it's a uh, it means fat or heavy set. So it's um. And this is more like like what Hyatt said. She said a larga. Which is like like kind of long and sleek, right? It has an extra, or or, or even a Corona extra, extra, right? But so it's interesting. They it, the cigar names are all over there. I mean, yeah, I think they just yeah. willy nilly, willy willy nilly. This could even willy. be a bloody Lonsdale. A Lonsdale is between six or seven inches, right, Mark? Yeah, and between forty two and forty six. Like forty two, forty four. So six, six to seven inches. Forty two, forty four is is a Lonsdale, but you could say forty six. We could get there. I would call this a Lonsdale, definitely. Yeah. Nice. 
Mm-hmm. Got a little bit of twang in there too, which is interesting. Um. So what's that twang remind you of? What, 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 what we getting with? What's the twang telling you, Mark? Mighty, mighty DR, Dominican mm -hmm. Republic. You know, right? That's what what we have as far as uh, as far as that. Um, yeah, it, and it, and it and it's there is for me a little bit of sweetness. Again, like I said, my descriptors are kind of off, so um, <laughs> I can't. I, I'm like I'm like on the uh, the unsalted brown sugar, uh, unsweetened. I want, look. I want the sweet molasses. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the description as the smoke output as being medium and sharp. Mm. In other words, it, ooh, don't get too close to this smoke guy. But as I yeah, as I as I narrow it down though, I kind of feel like I'm like I'm gonna get this one because there's this this sort of this um. There's this rich sweetness that I get from it, which is kind of like, oh, not like candy corn, but there is a little bit of bitterness in there, too. And not bitterness in a bad way, but it's like, a, um, kind of like a sweet and sour taste. And that's usually not, not how the profile of Mexican San Andreas comes along, which is interesting. Interesting. Interesting, I say. The brain Very cells are... Two brain cells are being rubbed together right now. I can see smoke coming out of his ears. <laughs> well, this, this cigar was released last year at the PCA, uh, mm. and a portion of all of the profits from this cigar goes to a Ignite the Spirit, Ignite the Spirit uh, charity that Eric mm. Bay either founded or has something to do with it as well. So, yeah, I I really like the name of this cigar too, though. I think that's. You know what it relates to, yeah. No, I don't actually, but oh, uh, but but okay. let me let me just say that when I did the thumbnail, I'll tell you what. It, well, so when I did the thumbnail for this video, I was looking for like a disco a dystopian landscape, in the background, like of a you know like so that we could have like things. But I was like thinking it might be too dark to like put up like <laughs> like a destroyed city in the background. No, this the cigar is named after well. There's two kind of descriptions or reasons for it. But one of the reasons like, is that Eric actually likes uh, Queen. Mm -hmm. And if I told you that, you might be getting a little closer because one of their most famous songs is Don't Stop Me Now. Don't stop me now, right? Because I'm having a good time, right? Um, so they're calling Mr. Fahrenheit. Yeah. Ah, that's it. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna make a super man out of you. Yeah, that's cool. Stop me now. Yeah, that, that's so, all. Yes. So we got a question here from Sid Butler who says he's building up his stash of Connecticut cigars. Uh, and he needs some suggestions. I will get a bundle of farm oh. roll Connecticut to start off. Uh do you, do you like this cigar? <laughs> I'm trying to see what you tried to probe. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was waiting because I was going to say uh, CLE Connecticut. I like. I like. Oh, yeah. Lot 23. Oh, Lot yeah. 23 Connecticut is another good one. Uh, I tend to also like. I don't know if the uh, the the Perdomo Champagne is that got a Connecticut. I think it does. Claro. I, I think know. it does. I think it. I think it's a con. That's a the 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 Connie shade, like the you know the light one, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, Cabu yeah. said, "Could this be a broadleaf Connecticut? <laughs> yes, it could be. Anything. It it, it, it yeah. could be. It could be. And and yeah. and that's and and um." Reason why it could be is is because the because I'm looking at the tobacco and I'm looking at the the veins in it and stuff and it's a bit smooth, right? And the Mexican San Andreas can be a little bit more rustic. I know that even the broadleaf though can be like super rustic too. But one of the reasons why that the tobacco comes out so nicely, Connecticut broadleaf tobacco is such such a nice tobacco, is just because it's usually under cloud cover, 
and they simulate that cloud cover in Ecuador sometimes or in other places. So when you grow like leaves for the that are specifically sometimes they're not, but specifically grown for wrappers, what happens is 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 that they have to put a tarp over it so that it doesn't like you know it doesn't get too tan per se or you know or get like you can look at my skin my skin's all screwed up from the sun right so the the skin is the, the same effect it's like with tobacco it's like the longer you leave it out there but if you have a little bit of shade on it you kind of tan it slowly <laughs> you get a little bit uh you get a more fine wrapper so uh, the and what i'm saying is in mexican san andreas wrappers don't necessarily have that same consistency to them so yeah, I'm leaning towards Connecticut broadleaf on this one, for that for that reason, it's it's a little bit more smooth and there's less pock marks and stuff in it, and they tend to the Connecticut shade tends to be grown pretty well. But yeah, I'm liking I'm liking this, I'm liking the the cigar so far. I'm really, is it, really hey, Mark, is it is it any spice for you? Do you feel that it's spicy at all or no? I'm I'm like uh, I'm with the audience. Like there is uh, there is some spice picking up. But I'm not really feeling the spice. What about you, Heidi? Yeah, it's 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 weird. Very I'm long. feeling the spice, um, but it's not a long, long, spicy burn your nose hairs out. So I got to go over to Anthony and get one of them damn wigs. It ain't like that, but I feel like it's it's just in my mouth. Like after you've had some hot sauce and that after effect is there, and I'm also starting to pick up some mineral on the finish as well. Yeah, that fight mineral. Yeah, that mineral that mineral taste is like the um is that of Dominican, right? It it has it has that Dominican feel to it. The the cigar has 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 a let's just call this what a mixed bag right now. You know, it's it's like funny is is all of the flavors that we have in this cigar are ones that probably alone we probably wouldn't like 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 them, but maybe they're it's coming together and it's kind of balanced. What do you think about balance, Heisen? Do you think the balance on this cigar is good so far? Mm. I don't know. I'm not really digging this cigar, to be fair. I you are not? Yeah, I feel it's a little bit too okay. chippy choppy, choppy chappy. Yeah, it, like I said, it kind of like it's like, think of a pie chart, right? At some point, like you have like, you're tasting a lot of mineral and then you're getting like, sometimes you're you're getting a little bit of like some earth you're never getting them all blended together. It's yeah. like, it, it, right? So it's like, yeah. yeah. I well, don't know. I'm going to be in the minority this evening because. Uh, <laughs> and you love it. I love I, this cigar. I, I like this cigar. <laughs> right. uh, it, what it's reminded me of is this. It's like sometimes you sit down and smoke a cigar and you, you got a lot of time to pay attention to the cigar. Other right. times you're paying attention to other things and you're just smoking the cigar. Mm. And I feel like it's got enough oomph to keep my attention without me having to pay attention to it. Now, right. is it the most favorite cigar? No, but I ain't feeling that it's that it's bad. Now, Spider said the retro is nice. Uh, I kind of get the feeling that uh, this is going to burn me up, but let me see what's going on. <laughs> oh, oh, hell. It absolutely isn't that I don't like this cigar. I think this cigar is 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 okay. I'm just not blown away by it. Maybe I was expecting more. Is you know, yeah, yeah. My, my I'm gonna say this, this is a weird a weird thing I'm gonna say about the retro hair. It picks up the 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 pepper, and I'm saying toasted coffee. I don't I don't know what the hell toasted coffee is, but that's what. <laughs> I'm like toasted, not roasted, but toasted. toasted. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a thing. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real thing, actually. I, I like the retro. I think you're right. I think the retro is a bit. It, it has a bit more creaminess to it. It feels like it just. Yeah, I'm definitely getting a little bit more on on what I like. I don't know. Maybe it. Maybe it's the mineral. I don't know. All right. Here, here's the. Here's the. Here's the deal. I'm ready to guess on this one. Okay, Hold on. Ahead. Before right. you guess. Before you guess. Cod Blue has a question. He says, now, is the white ash any type of indicator? Before you answer and guess, I want to answer you to answer that question. Well, I, I was, that's why, that's why when I saw his comment, Absolutely. I, that's why I said I'm going to guess right now because I'm going to explain right, it. That's part ahead. of it, right? So is the white ash any type of indicator? Absolutely. That's indication of Dominican tobacco. In this one. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and it would be Dominican 
Dominican binder, I'm pretty sure here. I mean, a Dominican um, filler. I'm pretty sure about that. I mean, it's like, if you look at the, the ash, right? It's, you have another cigar. And if you were able to say a friend was smoking a different one, this one has a white ash. I mean, it's almost practically you know, like a very white gray, right? Yeah, yeah. You see, there's two cigars, Hyacinth's holding up a, that's a session, right? Yeah. So the session, I believe, is Nicaraguan tobacco, right? Yes. And you have that. So the Nicaraguan tobacco is on the is on the binder. Let's give it Nicaraguan tobacco on the binder, and then we'll give some Dominican fill to, filler on this one. I would say this is a Dominican Seiko as well because the cigar kind of like has that smoke output and it's like um, uh, with a with a dryness to it. Yeah. And there is like, it does have good smoke output. Um, so it's light in the sense there's not, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of strength. So Dominican filler with a Nicaraguan binder on this one and then we're just going to jump straight to it and just go because of the smoothness and the lack of that like real punchy earth that you get from Mexican San Andreas um I'm going to say that's not in it so here's the final thing it's it's a Connecticut broadleaf wrapper with a filler which is Dominican Republic because of that twang and the color and then the center the core is Nicaraguan and perhaps a blend of a uh, binder is also a blend of Dominican and Nicaraguan. So it's three tobaccos. This one. That's my guess. Yeah. yeah, you got it all right. You're all right. Connecticut broadleaf binder, Dominican, I mean, wrapper, Dominican binder, <laughs> and mix of Dominican and Nicaraguan on the filler. Yeah. And, 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 and you know what's well, funny? This ash is like, if you ever get this ash, just know, because it's, look how tight it is as well. It's like tight as yeah. well, and it's just white. Mm -hmm. it, it's like, it's just so... Uh, whitey, whitey. Tight, tight, white. <laughs> no, but hey, guess what, though? Whitey, whitey ash. Yeah. Lee Mac, you know what's funny? The audience guessed this one tonight. Yeah, it wasn't did. me. I just read what they said. Yeah, Everybody they, guessed they, it. They, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and tips. But here's the thing. But yeah. that's, so that's how you do it, guys, right? Is you take so you take down a note, right? You take down the notes of it. So think about like when it, so what I said what I said about the Connecticut broadleaf and the the difference between a Connecticut broadleaf and a San Andreas. If you know the two different qualities, then you can look at you know derive the look off like use the look of it, right? There you go. You get that. Then you know that the, this this one specifically is, is very accentuated in the sense of where the, the Dominican tobacco is that pure white. You know what I'm saying? It's just like white as snow, right? That's like such a Dominican trait. Like that's like, and you don't see that a lot on cigars because Dominican tobacco is not really used as much. They don't use it. So this has a lot of Dominican tobacco in it. And then you kind of get there because if you could just kind of figure out, you take the notes and you have fun and just remember the tastes. And, and Mark, um, I'm gonna tell you how the audience gets there. Google Mr. Yeah. Fahrenheit cigar, <laughs> <laughs> or they come to the show, right? right. And yeah. and we and they because because it seemed to be like like some people in the in the audience were doing the guess. They were doing it doing the guessing, which is fun. You guys, right? I'm thing. just I'm just busting. No, no, no. <laughs> I I know I know you I know you were messing with me. I mean it's um. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's fun to Google too, right? Um, so let's talk about let's talk about what, what what we have coming up next week, and I just give a big shout out here to Provada Cigar for providing. I'm, um, I'm actually coming around to this cigar a little bit now. Yeah, I'm going to the retro hell. Probably that's what it was. It opened my nostrils, and oh. uh, <laughs> nostrils. no, I'm, I'm my nostrils. I'm coming around to it. I am. It's like nostril Thomas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you think we've been smoking something other than the cars tonight and we haven't i'm just flat happy tired go ahead mark anyway <laughs> no anyway just wanted to thank you to provide i was going to go into a little bit of a of a, of a station identification but i will hold off on that uh, because I, I wanted to comment on Hyacinth's ritual and the fact when she said, oh, I'm coming around to it. 
the the funny thing was is I don't want the audience to think I have I'm not enjoyed the cigar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the reason what I was just describing the the way this one was, you know, that it was kind of chopped up into different things. So sometimes, you know, it could be a detriment where you say the cigar is unbalanced or something. But this cigar seems to be smoking a specific way. You know what I'm saying, Leander? It's like it's smoking in in its different mm -hmm. pieces rather than balance and sometimes we complain that it's unbalanced or or it's when sometimes a cigar that's too balanced is unflavorful you know what i'm right. saying so it's an interesting cigar i think it's really hard i mean we could ask francisco how <laughs> right we can ask francisco about the um francisco yes we can uh we can ask him i'm not we can ask him about the 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 because he has the you know the uh, Dominican uh, uh, tobacco a lot. Yes. It's, it's hard. It's hard to blend that stuff. It's really difficult. Yeah, but... It's not that easy. I think it's one of the harder tobaccos to blend. When it comes to, to Francisco uh, Almonte... I want to say Alvarez. Yeah, Alvarez. He's the baseball <laughs> player. Um, Fra Francisco Almonte is... And Lee Mack, you could attest to this. His Dominican tobacco just doesn't taste like anybody else's Dominican tobacco, no, right? It <laughs> it's like, it's like it just, what is going on there? Right. You know, it's tobacco, right? So, yeah, it's, it's got really good construction. I think uh, Cop we mentioned. Yeah, um, yeah, you did ask as well about what we thought about the strength and the uh, body on this. Do we have any? Uh, I'm gonna go full body on it. Up? Full body, lots of flavor. What about the strength? Do you have anything to say about that? Medium. Lee Mac? What do you think? What about so flavor? Uh, flavor is kind of like in the middle. Kind of in the like, middle of the road. Uh, flavor yeah. is decent. Medium, 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 medium. I'm going medium. I'm not going to go medium plus. Uh, because there's really several flavors. There's the spice. There's that graphite mineral. Yeah. A little bit of coffee maybe on a retro hill, but not much else. So not not a whole lot in complexity and flavor but the flavor level is medium uh sydney depends on the price let's talk about price <laughs> um let's see so gorda gorda three different tobaccos connecticut broadleaf eleven dollars how about that you have the price d back all right 11.99 yeah so nine to nine. So you know you're right about it, in the price there. And if you get the the pack, right, mm -hmm. the April pack, which is thirty dollars or thirty one dollars or something like that, you get a discount on this cigar already. If you just divide it by four, you're you're already. I think you were it out to be seven dollars on something, right, for the whole, uh, thirteen packs for the um mm -hmm. second quarter. So yeah. Yeah. So. So I just got like a bit of a salty mineral on this one. So this is this is a complete change up from what I'm used to smoking. So you know what? Mm -hmm. I would definitely score a five pack and sneak it up oh, under shit. the um Sorry. your 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 uh <laughs> your ash fell on your lap? No, it didn't fall on my lap, it fell on my desk. But because I'm sat close to my desk. Oh yeah, I see. Oh, yes. But it's it's safe, don't worry about it. It'll take care of itself later. Yeah, I, I could see myself snagging a four pack, five pack. Yeah. All right. It is. It's different. I, like I said, I've come round to it. Yeah, it's come cool. It. Like I said, I think it's a pretty interesting cigar. It's like, and I think it's like I said, based on the different tobaccos, tobaccos, um, it's interesting that you would pair these cigar, the 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 tobacco leaves, mm -hmm. these three together. Yeah, you know what's interesting, Leander? What do you think about this, right? And so this this question I'm going to give to Leander. This is an interesting one, right? So if you have, so let's say you have, you're used to smoking like cigars every single day, like we do and stuff, right? right. Would you think that this cigar, because it's so different from other cigars that you have in there, it can, it's kind of a good cigar to have because it goes to an extreme that's sort of not necessarily in your wheelhouse, but, you know, so it's like yeah 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 so i i just kind of peeked in and saw sid butler's comments it says but is mm. it good though um it's different i don't know i want to go to extremes for the stuff that i like 
You know what I mean? So I got to like it to go. I don't want to go to extreme just because it's different. It's got to be an extreme that I like. This mm-hmm. cigar to me is kind of like smoking. The The taste of it kind of is reminding me of like Ecuadorian Habano, which is a taste that I don't like Ecuadorian Habano. But it's not really Ecuadorian Habano. But I think what's what's drawing me off is the Dominican mineral is mixing in with that spice. Um I can't say that it's uh, bad, but I feel like it's maybe a good start. How's that? Yeah, I I agree with Lima. There's just something that's not quite right. I don't know what it is. And I don't know if it's meant to be not right. You know what? Like, say, for example, yeah, uh, when I was younger, we used to go in the summers occasionally to stay with this family up in Scotland. I think people know this in America. They think some people, some places in America do the same thing. They would we, they would have oats porridge for breakfast. So they'd force us to eat oats porridge for breakfast. And they would put salt on their porridge, right? It's not something yeah. that we do in the South or in England. We just don't do that. We put sugar on our porridge. Don't put salt. So the combinations of flavors is just weird. Your tongue's not used to it. So you kind of like, it's not that it's necessarily bad. It's just that you aren't used to that flavor combination and it just like it turns you off a little bit not that i'm turned off by this cigar it's just that i'm just not used to this combination i feel like i've never had this combination before mm-hmm. i don't know if i'm i've never i don't think i've ever had a connecticut broadleaf with dominican filler i just i just maybe i have i just don't i would like to know i might have to dig it out and find if i have smoked it before i just feel it's unusual it's very unusual it to me. is and I know exactly that salt on the porridge thing. It's yeah. just the same thing that we have the first time you go to somebody's house and they have sugar in the grits and you're <laughs> used to salt in the grits, you know? You're like, what? What's same this? kind of thing. It's like, what the <laughs> hell is this? Uh, you know, no self-respect to something that put sugar in their grits, but you know. Some right, some, some people do. Like, exactly. Um, and I guess it's probably the same with the Scots. They're probably like, no self-respect Scott would put sugar in their porridge. Um, yeah, so mm-hmm. in the oats porridge. So yeah, I, I definitely get it. Um, I don't know if it's a complete success. I think people, some people would really love this cigar. I, I mean, I could probably end up loving it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I could. By the end of the cigar, I could be singing its praises. But for now, I'm getting used to it. I'm just like, kind of like a bit mellowed out. And trying to say, okay, does this work? Is this really working for me at the minute? So, yeah. So, so there's like a there's there's been this talk of the spice on here um, a lot, and I have not been getting like that peppery spice. I can't put my finger on what it is. The spice is not like there's some cigars that are like spicy, like red hot, so that they're, they're like you know whatever. This one is. It doesn't have that like peppery, yeah. It's not. Yeah, the pepper is definitely different. Yeah. Right. And then the other thing that I think is a good question is about the tobacco on the 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 mascara line. Do you, so, Lemak and Hyacinth. Do you guys have a thick or thin mascara line? Hold on. It, it's relatively thin. Mark's looks really thin. Yeah. All right, here I come. Well, my wrapper right. looks a lot darker. I think a gray man there. He's talking about free cigars. Mine's <laughs> thin. Yeah. He said, I, you know, there's, he, he, he wouldn't smoke it again, but he'd smoke it if somebody gave it to him for free. And I was like, you know, there's some cigars that are, even when they're given for free, are destined for the buddy box. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. But... So- Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, just going to say that, um, so with this one, I think specifically that the, since it's Connecticut Broadleaf, right? And it's really interesting that, yeah, that normally a Connecticut Broadleaf is like bark and it could be the mascara line is like, kind of like comes off the top. So this this is high quality tobacco. No, absolutely. That, uh, and, uh, it, said that, you know, the thing is there's difference between aged cigars and aged tobacco. A lot of times, you can, this cigar that came out last year, you said, Lee Mac, right? Say again. You said the cigar came out last year or the year before? Last year. 2023 yeah? PCA last year. Yeah. Yes. So, so what's happened a lot of times is that this, but the tobacco itself could have been aged 10, eight years, four <laughs> years, five years before they put it on the cigar. So, yeah. So, a lot of times you get a cigar and you feel like it's aged, but it's not 
necessarily aged in a humidor it's aged tobacco to begin with you know what i mean ah, so it's great. already got like a head start yeah um, so that, i think that's what's happened here definitely like you said mark the um the the cigar it is quality like you said i i definitely feel that this is a quality cigar yeah it's quality quality tobacco i mean yes. the bird the bird your, your ash was holding on for yeah. dear life there it, it was it was good um, it caught me by surprise actually but it was but, it was holding on yeah let me let me ask you this, right? So this this cigar was uh, rolled in Tobacco La Isla. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe I don't. I think some of these other cigars by Black Starline. We talked in this chat here about the Warwich. Right. I said I like mm. the Lolly Bella. Yes, and those were nice. cigars I believe that were rolled by Aganorsa. So correct. When you come out of a different factory, does it change? the flavor profile of the cigar because maybe, I don't know, if you take the same blend and go to a different factory, does it change? Or when you go to a different factory, are you subject to the effects of the blender in a new factory? Do you know, I mean, it, 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 there is a science, right? But there's also, it's like a creative science, right? The whole thing about cigar blending, because just imagine it, if you get, okay, put half a leaf in, you know, this batch of cigar leaves, you, they try to like, you know, batch them up within a certain size range. Yeah. So if this cigar leaf is four inches and you use half, okay, so that's two inches. But what if it's three and seven eighths? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So now when you use half, it's slightly less. So I think that there is an element of when you do change factories, there has to be. Plus, do you get the exact blend that if you're you if you're using a certain factory right do they give you or do you even like some you know we've heard of some people have ownerships when it comes to the blend and you know they end up not able to recreate the same blend mm -hmm. or use it again right when they leave certain factories or certain companies i just wonder i think there has to be something that makes it slightly different whether it's it could be positive doesn't always mean it's negative but i think there has to be yeah i i, I would agree with that as well like it's funny because the other day, Ison and I had a mango, right. and that was a really good mango, right? It Would was. you agree? It was really good, right? But right. we also, so the mangoes that we get here, they come from Africa. Correct. But then when we were in the UK, we would get the Jamaican mango, right? Which are a lot more, um, they're, they're not as, uh, they're both mangoes, but yeah, not, we, as, not as, uh, pop, not there's not as many right so the point that they're making is is that is that they're both mangoes right. but they taste different absolutely and they're kind of differently constructed so yeah. depends on what the factory where the factory is getting their tobacco from too right so one factory might get their tobacco just sent to them from another um and where are they place. aging them like the, the yeah. places where they hang them and age the tobacco before they take yeah i'm just there's all these things where how it's stored you know, that's definitely, it's going to affect it. So when you move from one, there could be a learning curve. Let's just say that, right? There could be a period where, which you figure that they would do before they release the cigar, but you don't know. Yeah. One, one other thing I, I want to add into the, to the, the mix of cigars. So we're gonna, let's do it just for fun. It's called magic, everybody, right? There's just certain people who are just magical. For example, Francisco Almonte in the cigar business is magical. Christian A. Arroyo is a magical guy, right? And their tobacco just tastes better. You can't, they don't even, they just do it. And they can't, they can't say, well, I do this, this, and that. They just do it. It's just part of them. So different factories have different processes. And there's certain ones that have this magic that goes into rolling. And then there's certain ones that just churn it out like machines, you know? So yeah, it's like, you know, you that's a fun about, there. You talked about like cooking, right? A lot of times, mm -hmm. like certain people have that just, you give me the same ingredients or something that and it just you do exactly as they're told to do. And it just is not quite right. <laughs> it's not the same. Because you know what? There's like you say, there's a science and there's an right. art, right? Yeah. And there's a science and an art, and it's almost like music, right? There, there are, you know, as a musician and a creator, you will put something together and you'll go, uh, not quite right. <laughs> and then you tweak it and you mess around with it. Sometimes you have happy accidents and you go, now nah, that's good right there. So you gotta be one of those people that knows how to go, now nah, that's good. Or, you know, um, 
I saw a uh, 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 like in Francisco's factory when I was down in the DR. You know, they have a, a scan system so they know which bench each roll, if each thing of fifty comes off of, right? Sure. And when they smoke it, Francisco or whoever is doing the testing is able to smoke the cigar that was made according to the recipe. But then they're able to find out and smoke it and go, something doesn't quite taste right with this. And they go mm. back to the bench and they look at the raw materials and they look at the roller and they try to figure out why is this not quite what we expect? Mm -hmm. Not everybody can do that. Not everybody has that that skill or that it's a talent, mm. you know, and, yeah. you know, just following the recipe is one thing, but following the recipe and sometimes you got to bump it to make it a little bit better than there you go. Big country, what's going on, man? Good to see you, man. He I got, I got smoking, so, I, he had some smoke flurry, snow flurries. Go ahead. I got I got something for you, Lee Mac. Pulling on the on the music thread, right? Kind of occurred to me, right? So the the blender is in, in music, right? The blender is the producer. Okay. The factory is the engineer. Yeah. Okay. Right? So in music, everybody, this is the audience, right? You have so you have a producer and an engineer. Right to the, you know, you're like, well, what do you need? A like, I thought a producer is the engineer. No, an actual producer is, is different than there. So you have two people. And should I just pop my collar and say, my album was engineered by the same guy that engineered Fear of a Black Planet by Public Enemy. Anyway, when I was a signed artist in <laughs> hip hop, but hey, we're just saying. And then we had a producer who is also part, who worked with Public Enemy as well. So the producer, on the engineer from public enemy and we put together our, our album but there's two people so yeah i think that, that that analogy of the of the music business um producer is is your <laughs> blender and your engineer is the factory and you can have a good engineer trust me they 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 can and, and a good engineer can screw up i mean a, a bad engineer can screw up a great producer's uh yes, stuff <laughs> they complement each other. You go in as like you said, you go in as a blend, master blender into a factory, you know, and you you get the the workers and stuff, and they have to be able to produce what is in your palate in the cigar. You have to be able to translate that, right, B Mac? Yep. yep. And to pull that thread a little further, mm. the song is done, and when you go yes. there, the engineer is the one that is able to pull out all of the things that you need. So mm. one of the things we talk about is EQ. And we're talking about the pepper here in the EQ, right? right. Every sound has got a certain sound, certain frequency range, lows and highs or whatever, right? So there you go. Uh, you have to be able to say, hey, listen, the piano's got some lows, but I want to hear the lows from the bass. And I need the drum right. to not necessarily give me those same lows, but I need a little snap. So I need to cut the lows on the piano and the drums and punch up the snap a little bit on the, on the drums or whatever. Same thing goes on the tobacco. I got yeah. spice. I might be getting spice from the wrapper. I might be getting spice from something that's in the filler. So if those two added together give me too much spice. I got to know how to dial it back in the filler right. so that it doesn't overrun what's going on in the, uh, uh, in the, uh, you know what the hell I'm doing. These damn comments is throwing me <laughs> off here. You know? But y'all know what I'm right. I meant to ask y'all, what are y'all pairing tonight? And speaking yes. of parents, I think yeah. it's time for us to it, get a pairing. Yeah. Uh, you see, I've been leading I'll, forward to, to get my thing to get the pairing. Let's get the pairings. I think I know what I've yeah. got here. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, but uh, but before I go, I I just wanted to say one last thing on that engineer thing right. is an, a bad engineer can engineer the fucking life out of a good song, <laughs> and then all of a sudden you're like, ah, you know, it's oh, like that's just no, it doesn't sound right. So. We need some like a little bit of the rough edges. Yeah, we exactly. want to keep that. <laughs> Don't smooth it out too yeah, much. Too, too good. Yeah. There you go. I, tonight, yeah. I'm going to throw, I found a bottle. Every once in a while, I'll look in the back of my thing there, and I'll go, oh, I forgot about that. Uh, I got a little bit of black tot rum. That's what I'm having tonight, finest Caribbean rum. And mm, it says, it is good. a rum to be remembered. Wow. And, well, and I'm going to pour that in my nice glass here that I got from Sister Tracy. Right. It's a, it's a little diamond-shaped glass. Oh, like that's it. pretty. That's pretty. Sits on, sits on the sides there, lets it yeah. aerate and do all of that stuff. Dude, Rod, what's happening, baby? Good to see you, man. Glad yes, that I you do. made it home. 
Hopefully you oh, will be uh he'll be doing the bourbon with the smoke. Nothing wrong with that. What's everybody else pairing since they're doing that? Uh uh Cam Scott said we're talking about that blend, go back mm. there to that whole blending and engineering thing that we were talking yeah. about. He said it's like being a Sorry. great sandwich maker. I hear you. Dark green, dark green. What's going on, brother? Almost <laughs> missed you there, brother. <laughs> A uh, uh, dark green, dark green. Uh, I need I smoking. dark green. I need to send you a uh, um, uh, I need to send you an email because I need to get your phone number. Uh, because I'm coming down that way and I want to try to see if I can catch up with you. So, oh, dark green, the green is so hey, hey, dark green, put your uh, put your email down there in the chat, man. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that the easy way, man. Yeah. All right. Uh, Big Country's got a green briar brewing black IPA called Mount Mothman. Uh, I like it. Cheers. All right. Let us know how that is matching up. Spider's got one of his usuals, the ginger ale. Nice. Uh, Latanya's got vodka with the Arnold Arnold Palmer. Palmer. Arnold Palmer. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Lovely, Cheers, family. Cheers. We ain't waiting for Mark. We've got, yeah, yeah, don't worry. Oh, me. Um, yeah, we've got some, like, really good um, alcohol spirit connoisseurs in the building. Everybody's mm-hmm. got something oh, different and special. Now I think I remember why that bottle was in the back. <laughs> 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 Nothing beats for sipping on rum. Uh, uh, how do you know everybody wants it? Well, you know <laughs> He might not know if everybody wants his email. Hey, Dark Green, Latanya, just just down in front, Latanya. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> down in front. I only right, learned that. I only learned that. that. I only, yeah, I only learned that expression when I went to a baseball game. And uh, yeah, because people were actually saying that to me, <laughs> saying that to the people that were standing up. So, yeah. yeah. See, but Latanya, when she stands up, nobody says that. So I'm. Just <laughs> They're like, oh, I'm not, I'm not telling her. I don't say anything to her. She oh, can stand up. And... When she stands up, they think she's sitting down. But oh, anyway. that's not right. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> Thank you, Art. Right, sorry. Oh, I have this glass. Yeah. I broke the other one. Remember? Yeah. I'm a glass murderer, by the way. I'm a serial glass murderer, by the way. Work. Latanya, you told me you don't want me to do double work. Now you're making me work hard. Come on. Now. I love this glass. Beautiful. Come on, son. Lovely. Yeah, the cigar itself is now kind of, you know, I'm 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 kind of liking it. I'm kind of liking it. But like I said, it's an interesting blend. So, and for some reason, I'm choking on the smoke. I don't know why that is. I know you should be breathing it in, but it feels like maybe because it's very heavy and it's just like, sitting right there and doesn't dissipate quickly enough when i want to take a breath of fresh air mm-hmm. but cheers everyone salut oops hey dark green give me the first part of your email address just give me the first part like the name and the numbers and let me do a search here uh, <laughs> uh-huh. i think dark green wants to give you his email <laughs> Well, 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 you know, here's the other thing. Dark Green said, how the hell you know I want to see you? <laughs> Keep your ass rolling. <laughs> 95 <laughs> South, keep it moving. <laughs> CK, what's going on, brother? Good to see you, man. CK, CK, welcome. Hey, well. I had to reapply some footy. And um, I had a... Uh, I'm getting on this cigar. Um sort of a a taste that's like almost like a like a a honey taste to it like but like the taste of honey without the sweetness like (laughs) unsweetened honey but like that sort of like a (laughs) sort of like like sort of like that like a but like the they're like some kind of something like that not maybe like unsweetened brown sugar yeah unsweetened molasses Oh, molasses is unsweet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like the aroma of honey, but not the sweetness. Right. Well, maybe that's what oh, my shit. man was talking about with the unsweetened brown sugar. Is that what it was? Yeah, but the but but who the hell is sniffing 
uh, brown sugar. That is true. You with you always smell honey when it's when it when it comes out of the out of the, you open uh, the, the yeah. Jar, it's, like, it's just right. Mm hmm. I getcha. Okay, you know what? I forgot about the name thing. We talked about the Fahrenheit thing and the song, the Queen song, "Don't Stop Me Now." But mm -hmm. also, it's based on the fact that Eric, Eric, used to be a firefighter. He did, and he was. So there you go, fighting the Fahrenheit. Yep. So you go over here, which is interesting because you know um, Queen is an English band. And they, you know, the Fahrenheit refer reference, we don't use Fahrenheit here, we use Celsius. We've used Celsius mm. forever, forever. It's always been Celsius. It's never been Fahrenheit. Yeah. And, and well, believe it or not, Americans use Fahrenheit, Celsius um, okay. and, and, and things much more than they think they do. Uh, what's it called? The um, empirical versus the um, versus... Uh, I say decimal, but there's another word for it. It's not, not just not what it's called, but the it's usual. Decimal. Like, for example, a liter, right, of soda is yeah. is is a is. Oh, a liter. Right. You're right. It is a liter, not whatever it would be. A gallon of soda. Yeah, people don't say half a gallon, do they? You're right. Yeah. Um, they use gallon for, for petrol and stuff, but not for. Yeah. Uh, you're right. Metric versus so imperial. Liter. That's it. That Thank you, creator. True. Yes. Metric. I said decimal, but yeah, metric is yeah. the correct term, so people. Thank you, Pop Boo. <laughs> what would we do with that? Yeah. So, yeah, we have the metric versus the old style imperial. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So, guys, here we go. This is just a, is important for us to do as well. Um, pitching over to Lee Mac, if you see that we got the website up for Bravada Cigar Club. And um, we've been really and shout out to the Provider Cigar Club. Shout out to Brian. Shout out to all the haters. We love the haters because the haters <laughs> make it a wonderful world that we live in. Great mm -hmm. stuff over there. Provider Mark's going to go through the lineup of what it is that we have. He's going to tell you all the great cigars and, you know, great deals that are there. And, uh, you know, hey, if you want to get it, go get it. If you don't, I don't know what you're waiting for, but go ahead. <laughs> so, hi, Sam. Do you see the cigar that's. Um being held on the on the yes. Pravada Cigar Club uh, website. Yeah. What cigar did we have last week? That's the one we did last That's week. That's the one we did last week. Yeah, it's the blue DJ cheese. DJ all day. Right? It's a band. Blue cheese. And um comes the hundred dollar bill, y'all. So, was it no, no no what's the word mark? What was the word? Dollar dollar bill y'all. No, 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 no. The guy that had that website, the clothing, what was it? Oh hundred. H U N N I D hundred it's like that's a cool name actually like, hunted, yeah. like sports sports uh yeah right yeah it's your hunted man they're really mean too <laughs> it's like people like their thing like some like i saw it's like the cigar they, so somebody likes their their post on instagram like, why are you liking my shit bro stop <laughs> pissing off <laughs> that's funny <laughs> it's, they're, they're like mad at people for liking their stuff. Like, yeah, they do. You can um, like it you get yeah. more. Just hate on your followers, and then you'll get more. So anyway, we got the these are these are the cigars we got here. Um, you can see the Emperor's cut there. Then we're smoking the Fahrenheit, and then here we got the seven twenty four. And last but not least, um, that looks like it is a um, black per. Bird's Perb, which is next week. Mm. It's April, right? So in the um in in there we have uh we, we're we're also gonna do the May pack, um, which I'm really looking forward to. We're gonna have some is that like a twenty five percent discount on the MSRP on that? Yeah. Yeah, well it it is. Yeah. I mean yeah. think about it, this cigar yeah. is twelve bucks, right? Yes. So you get three other cigars for what? Twenty eight? Is that right? No, no. Eighty eight. Eight eighteen. Right. right. So the yeah. So let me just go back to the April pack real quick here. Um, the April pack is thirty ninety nine. This cigar we're smoking here is twelve bucks. So that would be so thirty one. So nineteen. So nineteen bucks. You get three cigars. That's about six fifty each. Yes. Six thirty three each or something like that. Um. So that's the. the that but the the um the May Arabusa pack we're gonna have a, a little situation with um with that uh because of 
Memorial Day, and Pison and I are going to be going to England in uh, the end of May to through June. So we're going to have to do some arrangement there. But good news, we got a Pravada Spirits Cognac, the Nat Seiko 1965 number four, and then after that, Room 101 Farce Fedora Toro, and the Paul Stulak Red Screaming Sun Toro. You can. Pick those up. I think the price is thirty six ninety nine. Mm-hmm. Um, already, already showing that it, it should have been forty six ninety nine. So it's a good deal. But what we'll do is so see this one here, the, the Pravada cigar. About two weeks, we'll, we'll do it. We'll not maybe next week or the week after. We'll pick out some nice uh, spirits for that. We'll go. We'll, we'll all go on to Amazon here. Heis and I. We'll see what we can get and. Everybody will pick up some uh, some cognac for the uh, Pravada cigar. So now we also have in the in there too, which is really cool, the Jude pack, which uh, because we have five Sundays in June for thirty seven ninety nine, the Padilla Finest Hour, sun grown coral, um, the finest hour. Well, that might be like one hour before sunset. Anyway, the golden hour. Um, the Stallone Zeno Broadleaf. And then the Moonshine Bandits Shiner, the Jeremy Jack Prince, and the HBC Hot Chocolate Cake. And Hyacinth, you know what we need to get for that? Hot Chocolate Cake. We need to get some uh, Cartel. That would be the, oh, yeah. Cake Cartel. We need to get some, yeah. And some Mouth Hot Chocolate Cake, too, yeah. right? Cake, too. So um, it's you all about the <laughs> so Anyway, those, those are the cigars that we have coming up. So we'll just give a big shout out and thank you to. Provada Cigar Club for always. That was June. June. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to figure out which we could order because if we order it too early, they'll all be they'll all be drunk before we'll the be show. We'll be in England, so we can pick them up too. That is true. Smuggle them back in our uh, hand luggage. Try. Or you could just buy on. They wouldn't have them on the plane though. They don't have it. They just have the punk. Anyway, don't worry about it. Yeah. Let me. Let me do it. Let me do a great uh, a great thing. Let me. Um, Give a cheers to the audience and tell Lee Mac how much I appreciate him. Lee Mac, we appreciate you, bro. you brother. Um, thank you for <clears throat> suggesting to get this pairing. And so cheers to Lee Mac 912. Cheers to Hyacinth. And thank cheers you. to every single person that's in chat. Thank you so much for being a part of everything we do. Um, wanted to say that I, I give this toast with San Miguel, which is the... Pilsner of Spain. San Miguel was the greatest warrior of all time. I think Saint, Saint Michael. Saint Michael. <laughs> he made beer. Cheers, family. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> his legacy. His legacy will be known in Spain as I'm an excellent beer. Angel. This is his contribution to Spanish culture. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And, and the Spanish are very religious too, and the fact that they have a beer company named after Saint Michael, yeah. it just makes sense, you know. Um, especially since it's so good. But, it does. So Lee back, what's without looking, without Google, no no uh no quarter, what no looking at anything. How long have you been smoking a cigar for? You know, I just looked at the time. Ah. <laughs> no. Just lie to me, brother. Just lie to me and pretend you didn't. How long have you been smoking? <laughs> Yeah, we've been we've been out here about an hour and change. Hmm. Which is, I mean, I'm still struggling. I mean, not, not struggling in a bad way. I'm just saying, I'm still like, whoo, getting through this cigar. It feels like it, I still have another twenty minutes to go at least. Yeah, but it's it's, it's that bloody Connecticut broadleaf. It takes forever to burn. Um. So with uh, with everybody in the audience, Hyacinth and Lee Mack, um, we're getting some transitions though. I think we're getting towards the middle of the cigar. Where where is everybody at, guys? In the audience, hold your cigar up to the to the camera for us so I could see you. And um, and Lee Mack, you, let me see where you're oh, at. Oh my God, Mark, you've got forever to go in your. I have a lot. Yeah, me, me and Lee Mack are about about the same. Yeah. Hyacinth, ah. Hyacinth is 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 uh, is is shot call and big ball. <laughs> So, oh my God! Yeah, I'm back onto the the uh, fast train again, speedster. Yeah, and, and I'm well ahead of you guys. Now the slow burn um would come from mm-hmm. the Dominican tobacco, and you know, it's the, it's the wrapper as well. 
Well, it, it the cigar feels somewhat moist, right? <clears throat> it's kind of squishy. And and yeah, well, you know, you're right. It is. Like, you know, the fact that yeah, you are right. But it is not. It but it is not um, <laughs> Dominican Peloto tobacco. It is because Dominican Peloto, you could go downstairs, you could go up to the to the store across the street, pick yeah. up some beers and come back and your cigar yeah. would still be go lit. Shopping, go to the gym. Yeah. So come back and your cigar is still It's like a Dominican like Seiko or something, really. Yeah. We're guzzling. But mm -hmm. it is good. It is a slow burn. I I I I, even I, even though I'm like ahead of you guys, it's relatively slow by on the highest in scale. Yeah, everybody's towards the middle. We're, we're all about the same spot. Um, this cigar could really get in trouble if you hotboxed it too. Right. <clears throat> so. Well, what about what about uh, how you're liking it? So we know how it's smoking. What's your thoughts on, you know, what do you think about the cigar at this point? Hmm. Go ahead, Ivan. Yeah, I, I would say it's 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 slightly above average. Um, I I think it's a decent cigar. Uh, I think it's got great construction overall. Um, but like you said, it's not a hundred percent within my wheelhouse. But that doesn't mean it's not a good cigar, as I say. It's just not something that I would generally like to smoke or enjoy smoking as much as other cigars. Yeah, like so for me, I if I saw this cigar on the shelf and I saw that it had Dominican tobacco and Connecticut broadleaf and then Nicaraguan, I'd pass it right away because not typically something that I've ever heard of. And as a general rule, I, I don't, I mean, I'm a fan of all cigars, but this, the tobacco I like least is Dominican. Now if it was Dominican Pelotos tobacco with the DPL or Right, DBL, you don't even use it. DBL blend is yeah. yeah. Right. It's like um, a different, like different subcategory on its own, yeah. Right. There's Dominican tobacco, then there's Francisco. Yeah. The, the, yeah. Dominican tobacco. Yes. It's, it, 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 it's Michelin star versus five stars. Right. So there's a big difference. Um, but the, uh, yeah, it, it, I, I don't know if I, if I love this cigar. I don't hate it, don't love it. I love the way it looks. Shagfoot, nice. Yeah. I like the Lonsdale or Corona Lacha, whatever you want to call it, sizing. Lovely. So I know that Lee Mac, I just know this is definitely a Lee Mac 912 size. Yeah. Lee Mac, you, you, you said you were in the minority at the beginning of the show, saying um, that you like the cigar. How are you feeling about it now? When Hyacinth said like it was a, a slightly above average cigar, I kind of was there. Um, I don't think it's like one of my favorite cigars, but it's not a bad cigar either. So is it, it would probably be the least favorite of my Black Star Line mm. cigars that I've smoked. Yep. Creator of the Balance of the Universe, I think the size is saving it. Yeah, could you imagine this in a Gordo? Be like... <laughs> you put it down, go to bed, wake up, and you go, oh, you're still here? Oh, Christ, oh my... I thought maybe you'd disappear overnight. I wouldn't have to come and face you again the next morning. You're still here. Two hours later. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it would work in a... Um, in a... In a, in, in a bigger size reason being is because you wouldn't get any of the flavor off of the yeah. off of um anything else the filler is just overwhelming that dominican would be just really unbalanced so this yeah. is the the size is saving it for, for... And, it, and it's telling it's telling i don't know um Lima, you you're more familiar with the line do they typically bring out one size or is it just because i think they i i don't i'm not only 100 percent familiar with their line because it feels like when you bring out a cigar in just one line, it only works in it. So one size, it only works in one size. Mm. But that's okay though. I, I yeah, mean, absolutely. You think about it. I mm. would rather put out a cigar in a size that works, Correct. rather than other sizes that don't work, 
uh, or put out a size that people don't like. It's like Absolutely. the Lancero. People don't particularly care for the Lancero. So it's Correct. a little tough to, you know, put out those Lanceros because people don't always like them, you know? So you got to put out what people like, you know, and we'll buy. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, I think that that nails it right there. But I think they, they like you said, it's good that they recognize that. We've already, like, determined it, but it's good that I feel like the, the team over there at Black Star Line also recognize it. Mm -hmm. it this now, is, they uh, did come out with a, a Robusto size, but they only made, like, a thousand, and it was a store exclusive, so. Right, okay. Mm. This is a good question uh, from... From Big Country Briar, uh, what leaf in the cigar is making it spicy? I I would, you know, it's it's, it's a really good question because ten. So, I uh, Lee Mack and I have been like really haven't been able to identify the pepper and the spice of it. It's kind of different, so it's a hard question to answer based on that because we we felt like we can't put our yeah, finger on it. It's interesting. My say the same thing i think it's for me the spice is very light on the retro it's like it's doesn't you know your nostril hairs are going to be intact intact smiley um it's not, it's not going to burn that out it's uh it's definitely not an ox an ox cigar i can't say ox the right way oh no, ox. yeah it's not it's definitely <laughs> it is, for me anyway i the only way i could think is is it the combination of some something that's going on there, like there's some kind of chemical reaction that's going on there um, between some of these cigars. Um, even the Nicaraguan, I mean, what's what's really spicy? Um, I don't know. Yeah, well, the, as a general rule, like your Connecticut broadleaf is peppery spice. Yes, yes, that right? is true. Yeah. So. Um, but I'm not really getting that, which is just, yeah. I know, it's, it's kind of. Muted? Yes, mm -hmm. spice is definitely muted on this one. Yeah, I'm not getting it on the regular puffs. I am getting more of the spice on the retro, but it's not like going to make your eyes water. Far from it. Yep. So uh, what we like to do also a little bit of um, give a plug out to uh, Black Star Line, and what I think oh. one of the, the best ways to uh, find out about the cigar company is by going to their Instagram. Right. And um, we we also, Hype Horizon, um, I mean, uh, <laughs> has a, uh, an Instagram account. And I just put up the schedule there. Um, the reason why I don't put up much of anything on there is because you, you, you'd get really tired of highest and then I smoking um, uh, Macadoo red cigars day after day after day after day after day. So um, follow uh, Black Star Line on Instagram. I'll just put the link in there, and you can find out a little bit about what's going on. Um, and the name is Eric. And the reason it's Lee back. The reason why you can only remember the, only the name is because he's the only one listed on there. Right. On, on, there is on a partner though. Their, their Instagram. He's more of a silent partner, I think, because he's he just don't he, he yeah, just, yeah, he's all, not. All, doing, I, all I he's know is that right. that's that's all I know. Yes. But I know that he did start the company with someone else. But Correct. <clears throat> I just don't know who it is. They've just erased him. He's like that, you know. Eric's gone solo. I don't think he's gone solo. I just feel like he's just the guy who does the media, and yeah, he's the uh, face. Yeah, he's the face, and the partner does still involved, but not. That it's not as uh, not as like on the front line, which is cool. Hey Max, so question that I think is in your wheelhouse to answer: uh, Am I reaching when I say Black Star Line makes unique blends? That comes from CK in chat. Yeah, shout out to you, brother CK. Um, I don't think it's a reach, brother. I don't think it's a reach at all. Um. Their, their cigars are not necessarily tasting like anything else. Even though some of the first ones were done by Terrence and Aganorsa, they didn't taste like Aganorsa cigars. They taste mm -hmm. like Black Star Line. Yeah. And that's good. It's good. I think that that's why people are, um, they do have a following. They absolutely do. Yep. Our core following. Yeah, so also just wanted, um, as I as I usually do, um, this uh, drives me because it's a project I'm working on. 
everybody in chat, uh, regardless of of whether or not you're already on the newsletter or part of the Hype Horizon fam, um, win a free T-shirt. Enter for free the hyperhorizon.com slash giveaway. So I'm going to I'm giving away 10 t-shirts. Um, all you have to do, it's really simple, is just comment on the on the post that I have there, if you have an Instagram account, and then you'll get instructions on how you can join the giveaway. So do me a favor, if you, if you have an Instagram, follow the channel and like some stuff. MD Spider and I chill out all day long and, and you get a little bit of vibe about the clothing and stuff that I wear. Um, it's my... It's my passion. I've been, I, it's interesting. I realized back in the 1990s, I had a, a, a sunglass line called Stokes Sportswear. And the ambassador was like a version of me, like, and his name was Cody Stokes. And then in 2004, Heisen and I, when we first met, like, so like we first started dating, um, we, we had a t-shirt line, which was called Poker ESQ. And we used to sell t-shirts and hats and hoodies was funny is when we play poker they were poker themed there would be times we were playing in the casino and people would have our stuff on <laughs> they, we, they and they didn't know that they that they had bought it from us so they paid us twice when we beat them at poker and 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 they bought one of our t-shirts so they paid us twice but yeah if you can follow um go ahead and give that post uh, a like a like and uh, make a comment and you'll get the instructions and doesn't matter who you are, I'm willing to give away one of the Stay Hype t-shirts. So that's for that. Yep. So I... did we answer Big Country's uh, question oh. when he said, what leaf is making this spicy? I think that we we addressed that, right? Or no? Well, we said we didn't know, but Kopu did mention about he felt like the, the Connecticut broadleaf was giving the most flavor. And Mark mentioned that that does typically have more spice is a spicier blend, yeah. right? Spicier blend of uh, tobacco. Mm -hmm. So maybe that is where it's coming from. Yeah, so we, yeah, we kind Which of- is, It's not coming from us as strongly as, as some, I think some of the other uh, people so the, in the chat. Yeah, so the answer to that question is, is, is kind of, we don't know, right. but we would suspect that it was coming from the uh, Connecticut Brawley. Well, we yeah. yeah. Um, but the problem is, is that the Dominican tobacco that's in here is, and earlier comments had said that, is the Dominican twang and the Dominican tobacco kind of toning down the spice? And so I, I'd have to say it is. So, is that, is that, like you said, the, 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 you know, you're absolutely right. It could be that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's why we're not getting as much as the, uh, the broadleaf is not as dominant. <laughs> yeah, so by deductive yeah. reasoning, Right? We could say that the spice is probably coming from the Connecticut broadly. Would you guys agree? Lee back, would you that's, agree with that? that? That's what it's a Connecticut broadly, though, not Dominican. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. So you Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> is there such a thing as Dominican broadly? <laughs> no, nah, yeah, I don't well, know. I, it I, probably would I, be hard to grow it in, in the Dominican Republic. I don't know though. because uh, Francisco has had some test fields Ooh. that were out there. Did he? And yeah, the uh, I believe the one of the leaves that he was working with was some Dominican broadleaf that he was looking to put on a wrapper as wrapper leaf. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I wonder how so, that. Would and when we when taste. we were there, he said this will be ready in about five years. So oh, it, right. was, <laughs> it was hanging in the barn, and when we right. saw it five years from now, we may see that. So we'll see. Yeah, interesting. Four years now. That was last year. Mm. Isn't it a promise of a new day? Right. Um. But here, here's a cool part, though. Uh, and Heisen, tell me if you agree. And Lee Mac, you, I'll, I'll ask the question to you as well. Um, but Heisen first, because we're both uh, having the same pairing. But is tell me that the that the the San Miguel is not making this cigar better. Absolutely, it is right. It's absolutely making San this Miguel cigar better. It's everything better. You, yes. you rub it on your joints, you know, you rub it on your face and get rid of any bad, like, acne or problems you've got with the skin. You rub it, you know, you put it in your hair, your hair will be all beautiful and shiny. San Miguel is good for everything. So now I ask... It's everything all right in your life. <laughs> so I'll ask the same question to Lee Mac 912. How's your pairing helping or hurting your cigar? How do you feel? Uh, this this rum is not my favorite rum. It's... it's uh... 
it's a Caribbean rum. It's not necessarily as sipping as sweet like that Dominican rum, mm. which I think would be a little better pairing with this cigar than the this Caribbean. I think Dominican Dom Diplomaticos would be a better pairing. Right. Yeah, I think the San Miguel definitely has a bit. It's one of a, it's a sweeter, one of the sweeter uh, uh, beers. So. Whoa, 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 hold on a second. San Miguel is sweet? You think? Oh, yeah, I am definitely getting sweet. It's a pill, though. Beer. The pills. Is it a pilsner? I don't know. It's, I'm getting sweetness on it. Is it a pilsner though? Compared to Cruz Campo, you, Heist and I are having an argument. Everybody. No, I, um, I, I, they... I, I, I disagree. The thing is with San Miguel, it has a strong alcohol content, but it also has a strong sweet. In my opinion, it is sweeter than Cruz Campo. Cruz Campo tends to be a lot like weaker and thinner, and to me, not my you know, my fave. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just took a sip. It is sweet. It, it is with this cigar. I'll give you that. Is this cigar is bringing out the sweetness of the uh, of the San Miguel? It definitely is sweet to me. What's Lee back doing? Bringing out my number. I got my number. My corn cob number. Nice. Do you need a number already? You you're not looking at the <laughs> screen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're clearly not looking at the screen. I look at the screen now, yeah. <laughs> oh, Mark Spider brilliant. said, the wife's opinion is the only one that matters. Just say, yes, dear. Correct. <laughs> yeah, I, that, that's why he, I... He does. It, it, so it, when he gets in front of people... That he tries to test the limits. No, no, that's not true. You know what I mean? But yeah, typically it's yes, dear. Yes, dear. <laughs> I used to say that to a girlfriend I had in high school, and she absolutely hated it. Don't yes, dear me. <laughs> it's, yeah. <laughs> it works, yes. <laughs> real time real time proof right there. It um, did. Yeah, it did. Thank you. Move on. But if you want to do it, you just, just if you also just like one of the things too is to go like this. Just put your pinky out when you're talking to somebody. When they're talking and you want them to stop talking, just go like this. Just do that, and you'll see they stop talking. <laughs> that doesn't work with Hyacinth. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. He's right. He is right. He knows me well. Yes. I've seen it in action. It doesn't work. <laughs> oh, I go straight through that stop sign. <laughs> Ignore it. <laughs> Yeah. I think I think I think um, Latanya. I think it's more about resilience. I think that just women have a higher threshold for pain than than men do. <laughs> and 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 uh, and I think I think we just give up. <laughs> so <laughs> happy wife. Happy wife. <laughs> But yeah, I, like you said, the ash is definitely holding on for me. Um, it's holding on again. I'm onto the last uh, third, and the ash is still like you know tight. Yeah, yeah. It's just to it's far, it just come off until it's ready. Yeah, just a little bit of uh, lifestyle influence here too. Um, I I saw some potatoes on uh, Instagram. Um, uh, my my brother uh, MD Spider is uh getting his batch of potatoes ready. And one of the interesting things that, uh, that I learned about him is he's a master barbecue and smoker. Right. And smoker meaning smoker barbecue, yeah. not just a cigar smoker, does he, so. Uh, does he have, uh, MDS, let us know, do you have one of those kind of extra crazy? Let me just say, oh, hell yeah. Smokers, you know <laughs> what I mean? The ones that have like, you know, all these, different little bits and bobs that add to it. You can like, you know, put it on different settings and all that stuff. I said he was a master smoker. <laughs> Leobot, that's a very serious uh, person. It seems like... <laughs> I have to laugh at Leobot. <laughs> it was time to say, ain't nobody asked you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Latanya. I'm trying to I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to be nice. Yep, 20 foot I knew it. 20 foot smoker. Uh, yep, that'll do the trick, I think. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think you could smoke a little meat in a 20 foot smoker. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> he wears a whole, a whole cow. <laughs> there you go. The you could probably like... get rid of a few bodies in that <laughs> thing, too. I'm just saying. Smoke some bodies. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> That's not right. Oh my god, that is not right. Low no. and slow, and you will be disappeared. Yeah, yeah. I'll just say. <laughs> That's wrong. <laughs> Yeah, we got a question of the smoke. The, the people with twenty foot smokers, they got like. <laughs> Someone goes missing. You're like. Three hmm. bodies. Not right. Oh man, Lee Mac nine twelve. So. MJ. I know. I'm just sitting here reading it. He learned from his. He learned from his starter wife. That's not right. <laughs> Starter wife. It's like a starter house. Hey, it's my starter wife. Leak <laughs> wouldn't know anything about a starter wife, would he? <laughs> no, no, no. What are you talking about? <laughs> the problem is, it, it the, the the thing is, is it also applies to daughters too, Leak, <laughs> right? So <laughs> you know. No, but listen, I have less problems out of the daughters. I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, daughters love their daddies, so yeah. <laughs> That's one one uh, female that won't uh, desert you ever. Yep, therefore she's always right. Yes. Um, so the <laughs> yeah, the I love the chat, man. I do. I do. I love the. I love the the chat. It's like lit. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. I have nothing to say. Just read the chat. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, yeah, save us. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, don't so. forget to hit the thumbs up button. Uh, I I don't think I hit the thumbs up button. Mm -hmm. Yeah, MJS says his daughter, his son gives him the the least problems, but you know what? Your daughter will take care of you. <laughs> When you're old and decrepit and you need Let's assistance, say, yeah. so she'll be there. She'll be there. Definitely different. Yeah. The boys <laughs> is like, all right, whatever. You you do your own thing. <laughs> right. It's worth it. Worth it. We are worth it. Yeah, at least the girls will call and check up on you. Them boys. That's what uh, I'm saying. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you. You'll be, you'll be stiff and cold <laughs> for weeks before they find your body if you had just sons. <laughs> uh, exactly. You heard from Pops? Uh -uh. They only call you when they need money. <laughs> you heard from Pops? Yeah, he died two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> the daughter would be like, Oh, I haven't heard from dad in like five minutes. Let me call him, see where he is. Right. <laughs> first time my daughter called and said, I'm just calling to check up on you. I ain't heard from you. I was like, Oh, okay, this is different. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Damn. Oh my God. Too yeah. funny. I love it 100% in the, in the chat. Let me follow suit. Dude. Follow. Yeah, the cigar, I mean, it's holding up one thing, you know. I think I've been smoking it a bit fast, but it doesn't seem like it's hot boxed on me. Um, and uh, yeah, it's the ash is held on again. This is my third attempt at trying to hold on the ash. So, construction, I know, got to give it a 10 out of 10. No issues there. I haven't had to use my lighter on it um, because I know Mark did because he went downstairs for a bit. Oh, there you go. Yeah. What's interesting uh, is um, it, there's like this kind of this is taste I cannot put my my um my finger on with this um with this cigar at all. You know what I mean? So it's just like I can't explain it. Maybe the, I don't know if the chat's getting the same thing, but there's like almost like this like you know like the when you put butter on a steak. And you have that like kind of taste of the burnt butter kind of like that's um that's on steak. I mean it gets on the vegetables or whatever. Kind of tastes like that to me. Is anybody else having like kind of um 
flavor descriptors like 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 that like and to the chat anybody that's smoking a cigar right now especially you latanya because you always have such good insight I'd like to hear what uh flavors you're having on uh on the cigar as well and then hi so what do you what do you like what do you think is the predominant flavor on the cigar that you're trying to I'm just take seeing, the ash off i, I can see how strong it is if it'll stay on any longer if i just try to shake it it's not going it's not going anywhere and i know it's going to drop on me you know what i mean when i'm least expect it i know it's going to do that to me so one of those cigars yeah so what's the what's the flavors that you got oh for me right now um i'm down into this last section here um it's still holding up a little bit i'm still getting that slight earthiness i think the retro is where it's at i know it's weird to say that usually when you get to an end of cigar you don't want to retro it but i definitely after i i uh retroed you got some of that spice kind of picked up in there and that was actually quite refreshing it's interesting typically you know you don't want the cigar to be too spicy but this one i think is a little under spiced in certain aspects but you know it's uh it's an okay cigar wow it's interesting but mm. I, see i i do it lee mac i asked i asked a woman specifically <laughs> to help me out and I got it, burnt popcorn. Oh, what? yeah, right. Yeah. It's the butter and the burnt popcorn. You, hundred percent. There it is. Thank you. That's exactly that. That's it. That's really cool. It that's what I'm right. tasting. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and it's like, but it's it's the it's those like ever like, I don't know what the, like if you've made popcorn and then the the kernel that doesn't doesn't pop yes. and you decide to eat it. <laughs> like you know like you go in there and you, you know, right and you like kind of suck on that one and you're like whatever for whatever crazy reason um that's what i'm tasting yeah that's exactly it it's a very good descriptor it's 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 the burnt popcorn i think retro is where the cigar is at i think if you if i'd retroed it a lot earlier i might have enjoyed it more mm -hmm. i think it definitely is uh one of the, a cigar that could be retro yeah. Um, so that kind of like lends me to say, I mean, the Nicaragua that's in there, then maybe it's just, uh, I don't know. Lee Mac, what did like, um, you, like you do like, like you, you're good at doing like retros and stuff like that. Um, what kind of, uh, what kind of retro hell do you, did you get like so, this? Not all the time you brought up the burnt coffee, burnt popcorn. Mm. I'm going to say that the retro is kind of taking that to another level and it right. tastes like burnt coffee. Yeah. So like if you ever had a pot of coffee that had the uh, the heater element on there and all of the water comes out, you burn that level, mm -hmm. that layer on the bottom, you say, oh shit, the coffee pot is still on and it's burning. Definitely got a burnt flavor there. Yep. Yeah, it's interesting is uh, Big Country Briar, you all keep uh giving descriptions of a cigar that is just okay that sounds great to me slightly charred buttery steak with mild spice and popcorn so where did this one go wrong the mac you first i i'll say where where it went wrong is that the balance right that's a good flavor but it needs something else to balance that so maybe i could maybe i could eat that burnt popcorn or the burnt coffee if I tempered it with something else that was a little more smoother, smoother, creamier, sweeter, that would take off that accurate, sharp taste of the burntness that we're getting. Yeah. I, 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 I agree 100%. Um, I think it went, it went, goes a little bit wrong with the Dominican. I, I typically like Dominican tobacco. I just feel like there's just like the Dominican is kind of wrong in this cigar. That's that could be it, you know. I feel like that is taking away from the other tobaccos uh, that are in it. Uh, like you said, all of the descriptions that you mentioned, big country, aren't typical of Dominican tobacco. So um, I think that's uh, like those are the ones that we're pulling out that we like. But there's like this other underlying taste that doesn't quite fit there's one that just doesn't fit you know what i mean yeah the, the thing is is like 
One of these people blows them along. Right. Um, one of these things not like the other. other one, one of these, these things. things. Right. It's not the same. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, that's uh that's a good that's a good thing is is um uh that dude Rod, I was just about to say exactly what you um what you asked was would letting it sit mellow out that, that taste. And I had mentioned earlier about the hot boxing. That if you hot box the cigar, you could really get yourself in a world of hurt. You know what I mean? We're talking yes. max pain. Like Max. just destroying your experience. And so I would say yes, that that would be uh the case if you kind of let it like cool down. But the problem with this cigar is if you don't continue to smoke it, it goes out. And then you get the top. I think that what you could do when you say uh let it sit out, I think what you could do is just take less um deep puffs. Just take like lighter puffs. Um, and that also wouldn't, well, you won't be hotboxing it, you know what I mean? Because the puffing isn't, like, drawing, like, through the cigar. But you've got to be careful again, because you said, if you take lighter puffs, then you risk the cigar going out, so. Yep. Well, no, now, there's... Go ahead. I would say, like, Latanya said, this cigar is not that bad. No. Um, and I, I'm going to say, I go back to uh, Hyacinth's comment, who says it's better than average, you know? Right. So I think it is better than average. It's not my favorite. Uh, again, if I had to rank, rank the Black Star Line cigars, it's not my favorite in the line, but definitely I'm not going to call it trash. And mm -hmm. it's definitely better than a lot of some other bad cigars that I've smoked. So I'm not going to put it in the bad cigar category at all. Yeah. Um, so the the thing is, is I saw in the comments, I saw, would Dominican Piloto make this cigar better? And there's very few times that you can say an unequivocal yes. And this is one of them. Um, if you've watched the show for the 10 years that we've been doing this show, I love Dominican Piloto tobacco. And one of the reasons why is because it stays lit. So it's such a great tobacco to put in. If, you have to, if you're going to put Dominican in there, you put the Dominican Piloto in there because you can thwart off of these notions that smoking it too fast um, would be a problem because it stays lit. It's such a, such a great tobacco for the burn, burn qualities. And a lot of the things that goes into cigar smoking is the sense that if you could keep a cigar lit and smoke it slow and or smoke it at a pace or whatever it is and it doesn't keep going out that will increase the overall experience right. so i think that um yeah 100 percent. yeah dominican peloto in the in this this there and you know what you know it's funny we'll find out right um black star line will come in and go yeah it is dominican peloto you know <laughs> Uh, but uh, that dude came back and said that he that they were referring to, um, in a humidor, like sitting having it sit in a humidor, would that correct the problem? What do you think? Mm. Aging it. Yes. Go ahead, uh, Leanne or Heisen. Either one of you answer I mean, that I, question. I, I, I think what would happen is, as all cigars age, they tend to mellow out they would probably lose some of the spice uh, on this and it might make it a, a much different cigar if you smoke this cigar two years from now it'll probably smoke a lot different than it smokes now will it be better now, though do you have to let it sit that long probably not but you know but would it be, be do you think it would be better it depends because right. if you like what it is now you would say no it's not better it was better Correct. before you don't necessarily right. like what it is now you might say it's better so it's all personal opinion you know mm. so it is subjective yeah absolutely. you know it's, it definitely is a slow smoking cigar latanya said that um uh it's a you know it's a good it's a good cigar i love the size i think the price is not hateful at all it ain't bad. It ain't bad. I just wonder when would I look at it in my box and say, you know what, let me smoke another one of those. I'm not sure when I would, you know, say that. Yeah, and the, and the, the thing is, too, is, is interesting is, is that the, um, 
I think that aging this cigar could help it. Uh, and the reason why I'm saying is because it seems to be very fresh. Oh, they're like fresh tobacco. Even though we've talked about how it might be aged or whatever. Well, we know the wrapper is aged, right? Yeah. Know it just feels fresh. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a difference between like, 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 um, and so again, referencing um, Francisco Almonte, Lee Mac, you, 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 you could taste the difference between a fresh cigar and an aged oh, yeah. cigar, especially when you're yeah. in front of uh, Francisco this Almonte. Is not aged, but you know what's interesting, Mark? Yeah. The thing is that you reckon that this is how the cigar is meant to be, do you know what I mean? Because it's like it's only been out when they release it, surely the intention isn't for you to age it for six months before you smoke it or a year or whatever a year All right it seems fresh yep and um yeah I agree. guess fresh what though so, you know what i'm like i'm looking at the chat i'm looking at all of the things i'm looking at everything i'm like looking at what i'm saying and you know what i'm gonna go on the record saying I like this cigar. And the reason why is because I think it's so different than what I'm used to smoking that just for that alone, I like it because it's such on a different spectrum of where it would be. And again, like I said, uh, Heights and I smoke Macanudo Reds. Mm -hmm. Macanudo, I, I smoke Lee Mac's favorite cigar, The Bones, on a daily <laughs> basis. So our, our, our selection is Macanudo Red. Um, the the bones CAO bones, a CAO session, and a Kadeha every single day, every single day, and they all they they're good. Don't get me wrong, but this is so different. So for that reason, I really do like this cigar. Plus, I think it burns really uh, burns slow enough that you can enjoy it for a long time. Um, it's a it's a chill out cigar. You're just like chilling. You're like you know. And right now we're at one hour and forty five minutes on uh, smoking this one. So well, that's, I mean that's pretty crazy yeah. for a uh, for uh, a Corona, even though it is mm -hmm. slightly longer. Regular Corona, it does. Yeah, it's like it's been chugging along. It's funny though; it does everything right, right? It does. It has good scar. It has smoke output, which you like, right? It has. Um... And the smoke isn't choking me like it was earlier. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's all like, yeah, I mean, it does a lot of things good. And then, yeah. and, and they, they, I really, I like that burnt popcorn um, analogy and descriptor. I think that's right up in there. Really good. It is exactly what, I, what, what it is. But it's, um, it could be a hot box mess, though. <laughs> yeah. It could it, so we so we ruled this out as a beginner cigar. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I think we might have ruled this one out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was easy to light. Yep. It has shag foot. Yep. Got a cool story. Correct. You know what I mean? Song is it? Man, I'm just talking myself into really liking this one. Aren't <laughs> yeah, I? Yeah, you have. <laughs> Talk to yourself. Oh, actually, I like this cigar now. But 180 degree turn. I will add, though, that the pairing really, like, just having the beer and stuff what? like that, just, like, kind of, whoop, you know? Just, I don't know, it, like, kind of brought me into that place. You know what I mean? Like, where you're, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you get in that place. You're, like, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, like, cigar smoking, drinking a nice cool san miguel knowing that the temperature is going to rise md spider it's going to get warmer i promise right you won't need those fingerless gloves when you're smoking in outside or yep. they should like design an outfit latanya sitting there thinking what y'all talking about it's getting warmer <laughs> it's already fucking hot yeah, here. Like, it was you know 28 today talking about i mean or in fahrenheit it was 80 degrees today. 85. This is a big deal about the weather. Oh, I think I'm, I'm going to have to put this down soon. It's getting a little hot. 
getting down to Zenob. I am never yet at this stage. That's right. cool. And we're coming up on uh, close to, what, two hours now, right? Over, yeah, over, yeah. It's crazy. It feels like insane that a cigar would take this size, take that long to smoke. So, Chad, what are you here right now? Tell me. Let me... I'm right here. Chad, what are you what are you hearing right now in the in the broadcast there? I know you guys love it, but what are you hearing? You're hearing the M I T M cigar theme song. I can't believe MVS had stuff. That's not right. It's April. No snow in April. You're hearing my jam. Don't worry. CK, we're going to play it, the theme song. That's what you're hearing. Which means that parting is always such great sorrow. You know what I mean? I said great, didn't I? Yes. Well, because I was thinking about Lee Mac 912 and have a great day. So I don't know. Anyway, I'm just like making food Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to give my. I'm going to give my, uh, my two cents on the cigar. Um, and, and then Heist is going to do hers and, you know, we can out Lee Mac 912, take it out in style. Um, so here's the funny part is at the beginning of the cigar, I kind of just was smoking along. There really wasn't much going on. We all talked about this weird, like, pepper that it was in and out. There was some obvious Dominican tobacco in the cigar. We started off with raisin. Remember raisin back in the day? Sounds like so long ago. There was raisin. Um, Heisen, I think, said there was some sweetness in it or something or whatever. But for the most part, I think this cigar became like more of like a meaty, hearty cigar. I'm going to go on the record and say it is a full-bodied cigar. full body meaning lots of flavors. But they're chopped up into different places. You get some spice once in a while. Then all of a sudden you get a little bit of like a, a that popcorn and like umami, like kind of dark flavors and stuff. I didn't really get much sweetness out of this cigar at all at any point. Um, having said that though, I really enjoyed the experience mostly because it took me on a journey that I'm not usually going down. So for me, cigar smoking is about that journey. It's about uh, trying things and also just enjoying things. Remember, this is a $12 cigar. So, yeah. Um, I think it delivered on something from the experience. Uh, thank you so much because chat, you guys made this cigar better and um, smoking along with you on Sunday nights always makes the experience much better. So I'm going to give this cigar a thumbs up. I think this cigar is, like I said, it's actually well above average. I gave it an overall 8.75 and I gave it a pricing of uh, 9 for price to value because you get a good, good hour and 50, maybe even longer if you take your time with it. Um, smoke, it's different, interesting, um, and if you like the flavors that we've described to you, try it. It's a good cigar. Mm -hmm. I'm on the fence with this cigar. Uh, I probably would smoke it again. I'm just not sure when. Uh, uh, everything I've said stands. Uh, not my favorite blend, uh, but it ain't bad. Better than average, so definitely worth the $12. Definitely if the flavor profile sounds like something that you like, then you should smoke it and get more. When you wake up in the morning, family, you got to tell yourself today is going to be another great day. Every single day without fail, you got to definitely say that to yourself. It's like preaching to the choir. If nobody else ain't preaching and listening, you got to preach to yourself. I had heard a minister today say today I was during COVID. I was in the church house and I was preaching myself into a joyous good time all by myself. And it didn't matter that nobody was there to talk back to me. So sometimes that's the way it is when you're talking to your subconscious mind. You are preaching to yourself. You are telling yourself that you're going to have another great day, no matter what is going on. Shout out to my brother Jason Ritchie. He made it back home. Had some tragedy going on in the past week in his life, and you know I talked to him.
him while he was on the road, and he was able to stop by and see our folks up at Black Lion, had a good time, good stop, and a good rest of the trip home. So no matter what happens, you got to look for the good and everything, because there really is good in the middle of all tragedies, unfortunately. Well, fortunately. We'll see y'all next week. Thanks, everybody, in the chat for making this a great show. We definitely couldn't do the show without you. You definitely make it a, 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 a great experience for everyone. Hit the thumbs up to everyone. Peace and blessings to you all. And uh, I'll see some of y'all soon. Peace. Yeah.